Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about black holes once again because a recent study actually discovered something really interesting about them and allowed us to actually very accurately measure sizes and um, various volumes around the black hole. In other words, we now have an even better technique on how to try to measure a size of a black hole and in some sense basically see it. Welcome to What the Math. So this is what most people imagine when they think of black holes, an empty space in the middle of space that may actually suck things in and uh, kind of destroy them in some sense. But a more realistic representation would actually be here. This is in Space Engine, and this is um, an actual black hole that exists in real life, Cygnus uh, X1. This is a transient X-ray emitter, which means that basically it emits X-rays from um, essentially consuming the matter around its partner star that then creates this beautiful accretion disk that you can see as I come closer to it and obviously also creates these very beautiful jets that you see emanating from the black hole. Now that's a more realistic representation of what a black hole might look like, and in some sense, if you were to try to analyze the structure of a black hole, um, there is really maybe only one part missing here, the um, so-called X-ray corona that um, is also very important when it comes to trying to analyze black holes. Now, a very recent announcement and also a paper um, that was published um, in January of 2019 known as the Corona Contracts a New Black Hole Transient uh, by these particular scientists from um, University of Maryland and also a few other places that was actually recently presented at the American Astronomical Society um, between January of 12 and January 16. Now, this is the primary investigator, Erin Kara, who actually talks about um, what they've discovered and how it may redefine um, our ability to see black holes and also measure their size. Now let's actually start slowly, let's go into details here and start by taking a look at this right here. Now this is actually uh, the image used in this particular study. The black hole that you see right here um, is currently absorbing a lot of mass from its partner. And this is actually based on a real observation from March of 2018, uh, the so-called Maxi J1820 that was discovered back in March of 2018 um, by the International Space Station, or actually the two tools used by ISS, the Maxi uh, X-ray Observatory and the newly installed NICER that you see right here, this is the simulation from the ISS, which stands for Neutron Star Interior Composition Explorer. This is actually a size of about a washing machine and um, is a very, very accurate, very um, sensitive X-ray detector. Both of these are meant to detect X-rays and that's exactly what was seen in March of 2018. And so uh, when a black hole actually absorbs matter from its partner star, um, it creates two things. First of them is the accretion disk, which is much easier seen right here in Space Engine. And the second thing is the jet that emanates from the center. Um, both of these are extremely, extremely hot and both of these are extremely powerful. The accretion disk is normally approximately 10 million degrees Celsius. Um, which also means that it emits a lot of soft type of X-rays. And the accretion disk has actually been believed to uh, occasionally change size or basically grow and shrink, but we weren't really sure about it. And then uh, the jet here um, has something else in the middle that's not really shown here, but it has this area around it, very similar to how our sun has an area around it, known as the corona. And this corona is formed by the matter that falls directly into the black hole and um, actually grows dramatically in size when a chunk of matter um, enters the black hole. And this corona is much easier seen right here. And as you can see, this corona is also very active, very energetic, and actually has temperature of about 1 billion degrees Celsius or in other words, something like 100 times higher than the accretion disk. And because it's so hot, it produces the hard type of X-rays, basically a much more highly energetic X-rays. 
And the most brilliant part about this particular study is that uh, the scientists were able to use the differences between the soft x-rays and the hard x-rays and also the combination of so-called redshift effect um, to actually not only find out uh, more about this particular black hole in terms of size, but more specifically, they were actually able to determine that with time, the accretion disk doesn't actually shrink as we thought, but the corona does. And this usually takes anywhere from a few weeks to a month. And so in essence, what has been discovered is that once a piece of matter falls into the black hole, the corona grows dramatically for um, a few weeks. And then um, every few weeks, it decreases in size and eventually reaches a very, very, very tiny size until a new piece of matter falls into the corona. But during that time, the accretion disk stays about the same. And the corona here is responsible for the super, super hard and very highly energetic x-rays, while the accretion disk produces much softer x-rays. And the way that the scientists discovered this was even more brilliant because they actually looked at, as you can see here, the reflection of these x-rays from the um, accretion disk. And so here, when the actual um, x-ray reflects, it takes a little bit longer to reach Earth. And they were able to see this particular difference simply because um, when this x-ray here is going to hit the accretion disk and reflect from it, uh, it's going to be more redshifted because it's much closer to the black hole. And so uh, they were able to see these differences and realize that, well, it seems that the accretion disk doesn't change, but the corona does. And on top of that, we can now see the area around the black hole um, in much more detail, more accurately, by using these differences in x-rays. So in other words, we can now map the area or the volume around the black hole um, with a lot more precision using these very interesting and very innovative techniques. This also explains why in the beginning of the mission, when matter falls into the black hole, uh, there's such a huge propensity for hard x-rays, basically a lot more of them um, are usually produced by the black hole, while with time, only a few hard x-rays are produced and a lot softer x-rays are produced because that's when the accretion disk once again takes over and the corona kind of fades away. The other discovery was that uh, the size of the corona when it sort of starts emitting everything is about 150 kilometers, at least for this particular black hole. And this is a solar type black hole similar to the one you see here, similar to Cygnus X1. These are usually about um, anywhere from 10 to 15 kilometers in diameter. And um, the size of corona here would be about this big. It's basically anywhere from 10 to about 20 times the radius of the event horizon. So in other words, it is pretty large, but um, with time in about a few weeks or in about a month, it shrinks down to about 15 kilometers and eventually may even disappear completely if no new matter falls into the black hole. And because the emissions from the actual disk didn't really change at all in time, uh, this suggested to the scientists that it's really just the corona that changes in size and obviously the jet itself uh, and not so much the accretion disk. So in other words, um, this important discovery showed us that in most black holes, in, at least in the solar mass black holes, the uh, actual accretion disk is more or less permanent in size. At least that's our current understanding. But the actual jet emanating from the black hole um, does change quite dramatically in size in uh, terms of only months or even only a few weeks. So that's a pretty interesting discovery and also something very revolutionary because this technique will hopefully allow us to um, create images or create 3D maps of various black holes we've discovered so far and to help us actually understand these very unusual, very mysterious beasts even more. Hopefully in the next few years we'll be able to use this technique to um, take a look at some other black holes, including of course the supermassive black hole in the middle of our own galaxy. But for now that's kind of all we know and that's all we've been able to detect. And personally uh, this study actually blew me away because I was really fascinated to find out how they were able to use the differences in x-ray detection and very minute differences as a matter of fact that you can find in the paper in the description below with very, very minute uh, lag in basically like milliseconds to work out that all of this suggests that 
this is kind of what's happening here. The corona is shrinking and the accretion disk stays the same. It's a very brilliant discovery. It's definitely uh, an amazing use of both scientific tools and also scientific mind and definitely justifies uh, extending the International Space Station mission for many years ahead. Unfortunately though, um, I believe as of today, the actual funding hasn't really been approved yet. So technically after 2022, ISS is maybe in a bit of a trouble. For now though, let's hope that the funding passes, hopefully in the next few years, and the mission will continue to discover new incredible things out there in the universe. For now though, that's all I wanted to show you. Check out the paper in the description below and also subscribe to this channel if you still haven't because we're going to come back and talk about this a little bit more in the future. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out and as always, bye bye. And I also wanted to thank all of you who have supported me on Patreon um, previously or who are supporting me still because it does help me quite a lot. If you would like to support this channel on Patreon, the link for this should be somewhere on the screen or in the description below. Thank you, I'll see you, space out, bye bye.